Hey everyone, this is Mike, and today I'm going to be talking about Gunbreaker and Warrior in Ultimate, <clears throat> and kind of compare the two of them against each other, and all of the different aspects that you might want to compare a tank or a job against each other. So I ended up progging the fight on Warrior, after I started it on Gunbreaker, I decided that Warrior would probably be the better choice when it came down to prog. In the end, I was very happy that I did it on Warrior as my prog job, because it did take us a very long time to do it. So not only is it a lot more comfortable on my hands to play, but it was also a lot more comfortable on my team, because when I did change the Gunbreaker, it was a little bit harsher, especially when it came down to healing, as Warrior is a tank that can actually provide a lot of healing to the party as well. Now, in this video I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I personally think why Warrior is better in certain places, where Gunbreaker is better in certain places, and also talk about the numbers, because numbers is something that people like to hear a lot about, going to be taking at damage done, healing, as well as damage taken, because kind of the healing and the damage taken can be quite surprising, I guess you could say a little bit. Um, but for the most part, when it came down to me playing Warrior, I played it mainly as a healer, meaning that my healing is going to be really high on Warrior, being about 20% to 25% almost of what a healer was doing. And then my damage taken is going to be way higher than on Gunbreaker, because I sacrificed the raw intuition on Warrior, for that nascent flash, which is why I am taking more damage, but why I'm also healing so much on that job. Now, first of all, let's talk about my personal feelings about it. So, when it came down to me choosing Warrior, it was for two reasons. One, because I do have that healing and I have a lot more support when it comes to keeping myself alive, thus making my healer's job a lot easier. And when it comes down to an ultimate fight, you want to try and make it as easy as possible, not only on you, but also on the rest of your team. So when it came down to me playing Warrior, it also made it a lot easier for me, because Warrior is a much simpler, not necessarily a simpler job, but a less busy job. Where it comes down to playing Gunbreaker, Gunbreaker has a lot of stuff going with it, it also has very heavy double weaving going on with it, which means that you are putting more focus on your rotation, maybe, than you are on the fight, and when it comes down to weaving defensive actions, you need to make sure that you can find a place to double weave those actions with all of the rest that you're weaving because Gunbreaker has that very busy rotation, whereas with Warrior you have very few offensive of global cooldown weaves meaning that you have much more place where you can weave those defensive actions. So when it came down to progging on Warrior, I think it was the best decision that I could have made for my team as well as for myself because it allowed me to pay more attention to the fight Warrior also doesn't have this annoying double weaving where moving the boss during double weaving is really annoying. So I didn't really have to pay too much attention to that either. And then of course I could just panic weave off GCDs wherever I wanted to if I forgot to do so. Of course, in the end after what was like 5-6 weeks of prog, everything was pretty much planned out and I knew on what GCD I wanted to weave what. But when it came down to progging on it, it was definitely the better option. Now, when it comes down to numbers. I guess we'll just talk about that first. Warrior is actually surprisingly close to Gunbreaker, so the reason why Warrior was, I think it was the least play tank before Alexander Ultimate came out, and I think Warrior still doesn't have that many clears in Ultimate either, but when it came down to how the tanking worked, is Paladin Dark Knight is the meta for this fight, Paladin Gunbreaker, or like Gunbreaker was used a little bit as well, but Warrior is very underused, and that is probably because Gunbreaker was this tank, or is still this tank, that has the highest personal DPS output of all of the tanks, while still being pretty decent when it comes to damage mitigation. And when we take a look at Warrior, before Shadowbringers, Warrior was the highest DPS tank, and it also boasted some of the strongest personal de uh, defensive cooldowns as well, when we look at, for example, Home Gang being on, like, what was it, 3 minutes before? Whereas now it is 4 minutes, so it's not as crazy, but you also don't need it that much in this fight. But its DPS got hurt quite a bit compared to what the other tanks are doing now, so Warrior went from this strongest personal DPS tank to now being the lowest DPS tank in the fight, or in the game. And of course, people look at that as well and they go, well, I want to do as much damage as I can, especially in a fight that has a tight DPS check, whereas, to be honest, in this fight the DPS check is not that crazy tight. Um, but yeah, so that's why Warrior saw a lot less play. Now, of course, as I talked about in a previous video, the healing power of Warrior, which I'll leave a link down in the description if I don't forget about that. But Warrior's playstyle has kind of changed from being this very defensive, high damage tank to a more straight... Well, 
how should I put this? A more predictable bursty tank that can heal itself quite a lot because now nascent flash is the new addition to warrior which makes it so they can actually heal quite a bit and if you want to see the numbers i'll put them on screen right now if you can see i am doing about 20 to 25 percent healing of what a normal healer is doing and if we take into account that phase one and phase two both has both of the tanks tanking so both me and my co-tank are tanking pretty much a hundred percent of that whole fight of course, in Living Liquid, you start out with one boss, but pretty much, like, after he does his first mechanic, really, there's two bosses on the field until the end of the fight. So, that's where Nascent Flash becomes incredibly valuable, because I'm not only healing myself, but I'm also preventing damage from my co-tank and healing him as well. And the portions where my Nascent Flash burst windows were up, because I use one Nascent Flash that doesn't really do much, but where my burst phases align with Nascent Flash are also portions where both me and my co-tank are taking good damage, and where our healers might be busy. So I think Nascent Flash is incredibly valuable, especially for those first two phases, whereas with Gunbreaker, the only healing you really have is through Aurora, and Aurora doesn't really impact it as much as you would want it to, because even though Aurora is the same potency as something like Equilibrium, you don't feel the same impact of it, because Aurora does go as a heal over time, so it takes a lot longer for it to do its thing and you don't feel an immediate effect of this. It's just going to feel like I am healing up a little bit of damage every time. But when it comes down to equilibrium, you can use it at certain places where it will completely replace a heal. So in certain parts where you would kind of want to just be able to get that extra heal from a healer, I could use equilibrium, whereas with Gunbreaker I can't do that because I just basically use Aurora on cooldown and just use it to mitigate some auto attack damage well in retrospect also doesn't really affect that much because auto attacks hit for like 30,000 and Aurora doesn't really heal for that much so maybe like the overall potency of Aurora would be like 30,000 kind of like how a non-crit equilibrium is about 30k so you don't really feel the impact of Aurora as much especially in the first two phases and then of course in phase 3 you don't feel the impact at all basically because you're only really going to be taking like one tank buster and you invuln that anyways so and then in phase four it's kind of okay but again not as much so gunbreaker kind of loses its valuable there when it comes to the healing aspect whereas with warrior its healing is so incredibly strong that you can't really put it on the side so to speak so when it comes to healing when it comes to mitigating i think warrior takes the cake I am going to be taking a lot more damage on Warrior than I did on Gunbreaker, I'll put the numbers on screen again as well, but when it comes down to healing up that damage again, Warrior completely negates all of this extra damage taken because it does heal itself a whole lot more, and then of course you can also time this healing with certain mechanics to make it even easier on your healers, whereas with Gunbreaker, yes you mitigate some more damage, but on the other hand your healers do need to take care of you, Whereas with Warrior, you do have a little bit more of a self-sustain uh, when it comes to that. So you can kind of keep a panic equilibrium, or you can use it in certain spots where you decide, together with your healers, where you would want to use that. So that's why I think Warrior takes it kind of on that department. Now, when it comes down to DPS, there is actually not a whole lot of difference between these two jobs. And I want to say that Warrior would be better for prog, Gunbreaker would be better when it comes to farm, mainly because of the skip in between phase 2 and phase 3. So we even already had this towards the end of our prog when we started to like see Perfect Alexander a lot more. And that is that if you don't want Warrior to be shafted on phase 3, you either need to hold an in-release usage on phase 2, or you need to kill phase 2 late, because if you don't do that, Warriors in release won't be up for the opener on Alexander Prime, and if it's not open, uh, not up there, you're going to lose a whole usage, or you're going to be losing in release fell cleaves, which you don't really want either to happen because losing a whole usage is just completely really bad because that's your whole damage window that's gone, and when it comes to the losing out on fell cleaves, that's not good either because those are free fell cleaves that also direct hit crit and it might also have you lose a usage of inner chaos so that's where it's kind of bad as well whereas with gunbreaker you don't really have to look at kill time gunbreaker's dps on phase 2 is also so much better than warriors on that phase. so 
that's also another thing, so you're going to be killing it a lot faster. But then when it comes to the skip from phase 2 to phase 3, you don't really have to care as much, because the only cooldown that is going to be affected by it is going to be the thing that gives you cartridges, Bloodfest. And it doesn't really matter too much, because you can still use Bloodfest pretty late in the opener and still gain the benefit from it. So that's kind of where Gunbreaker takes it for me, uh, when it comes down to just the DPS portion of the fight. If you want a side-by-side -side comparison, the DPS in between Gunbreaker and Warrior is relatively similar in Phase 1. Gunbreaker wins out a little bit because they do have stronger AoE than Warrior does. On Phase 2, Warrior gets completely destroyed by Gunbreaker. Uh, I do about, I think it's about a thousand DPS more on that second phase as a Gunbreaker compared to a Warrior. But when it comes down to both of them, you do have to move the boss a little bit more on Gunbreaker, which, well, you're moving the boss the same amount. But the unfortunate part is that you need to move the boss during parts where you are double weaving, which is kind of shit on Gunbreaker, so it can feel a little bit more awkward having to move the boss around as a Gunbreaker compared to a Warrior during that second phase, but you are rewarded with a whole lot more damage than you are compared to Warrior. But then when it comes to phase 3 and phase 4, on phase 3, Warrior does win quite substantially against Gunbreaker, kind of how Gunbreaker wins out on Warrior by quite a bit in phase 2 and when it comes down to phase 3 warrior also wins by a little bit now of course i only got one clear on gunbreaker so far and i also made a quote unquote mistake in the final phase uh, which i only found out when i was actually doing it and that is that i should have waited with my last no mercy to line it up with buffs because apparently our ninja stopped using trick on cooldown as well and saves his last usage to line it up with all of our raid buffs basically which is something I should have done as well. So technically in that final phase, when I use my potion, because I pop my potion really early, and I delay my No Mercy by like two GCDs for that, um, is I should have, instead of go into my No Mercy, go into a Nashing Fan combo, and then save my No Mercy and all of the other burst for the next time Nashing Fan comes up, which is where everybody else is going to be potting, where, which is where we're going to have our two, our three, and then also our trick attack. Uh, line up again. So that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, because tomorrow we're going again on Wednesday. Um, so I'm going to be seeing whether or not that's going to impact my DPS quite a bit, and maybe then my DPS will be kind of on par with Warrior. So I would say if I do this, most likely the DPS is going to be either the same or slightly in favor of Gunbreaker, but it's going to be so close to each other that the DPS difference between Warrior and Gunbreaker on the final phase is not going to be so much. Now the reason why the third and the final phase are still pretty good for Warrior is because, as I said before, Warrior's big damage and Warrior's main damage source comes from in release as well as inner chaos. And whenever those are available to you, the boss is also available to be hit. But when it comes down to them not being available, thus you not doing that much damage, you're going to be executing mechanics. And because of that, you're going to make it so that Warrior pretty much always has his big burst available when the boss is targetable, and when Warrior wouldn't do much damage, the boss isn't targetable either, which is why Warrior still has really strong damage, because pretty much whenever the boss is available, they have their burst available. And it's the same for Gunbreaker, but when it comes to Gunbreaker, you're going to be losing a usage of No Mercy over the course of the whole fight, I think. No, not necessarily, but uh, actually maybe you would. Um, but you would lose like a little bit more damage because Gunbreaker's damage is very constant. You have that No Mercy on one minute, and then every 30 seconds you have Nashing Fang again, which is another big burst window for Gunbreaker, but you only have that available, you can't use it on cooldown, I guess you could say. Whereas with Warrior you can, so that's why Warrior is still very strong in both the third and the final phase when it comes to dealing damage, because of how the uptime is on the boss. So if you want to take something away from this video, I guess you could say be it that you can play whatever you want. If you play Gunbreaker, you're going to be taking less damage and you're going to be dealing a little to a lot more damage than Warrior, but when it comes to Warrior, it does help you out in certain aspects of the fight. Like, for example, when we look at Judgment Trio, because in release is up right as Cruise Chaser spawns, you can burst Cruise Chaser down a whole lot faster and then focus all of your DPS on something like the... Uh, like Brute Justice. But then when it comes down to Gunbreaker, you don't have that much burst on Cruise Chaser, but then your burst will come up towards the end of a Brute Justice. But then on the other hand, you do have Heart of Light, which is a much better mitigation than 
shake it off when it comes to that specific part because you're only going to be able to mitigate one part of damage with shake it off whereas heart of light lasts for a few different J waves when it comes down to judgment formation so it's pretty interesting to see how both of these tanks kind of compare against each other i am going to be doing my next few reclears on gunbreaker most likely mainly because of the fact that i don't want to remelt to be honest and also just playing a new fresh job in that fight is really fun after having done it two months on warrior and of course there are still some small points that i want to optimize on gunbreaker as well especially that final phase and see how the damage kind of lines up right there but that's pretty much my comparison between gunbreaker and warrior if anything just play whichever you prefer the most in my opinion gunbreaker is much stronger in the fight when it comes to dealing damage um, not necessarily in the thirst phase because that's where warrior runs out but on the other hand you don't really need to damage that much on the thirst phase either in the fourth phase it's probably about the same i would say once i finally optimize my gunbreaker dps as well but for the other part it's basically all of the mitigation that gunbreaker has extra over warrior with being able to use heart of stone warrior makes up for with their nas uh, nascent flash not gnashing fang with their nascent flash and basically it's going to be healing itself a lot more so when it comes down to progging i think warrior is definitely the winner right there because it does allow you to focus more on your mechanics that you're going to be doing as the rotation isn't as busy it allows for more off global cooldown presses when it comes down to their defensive usage and you're also going to be healing out your heal uh, helping out your healers a lot more and then of course gunbreaker for me is going to be more fun to do next reclears on because I don't have to focus on the mechanics as much anymore because I'm already used to them and it gets me a little bit more excited to play as well because I am focusing more on something else than just the same mechanics that I've already done literally a thousand times. So that's gonna be it for me, hope you enjoyed it, hope it was a little bit useful to see how these two tanks compare up against each other and I'll see you in the next one.